2012 Terrapin 13. Oh, 13. Thank you very much. We are at the 2013 Family Reunion down in beautiful Harrodsburg, Kentucky. I'm Ramblin' Rob, your host for the greatest story ever told, 88.3 FM. Live here with Captain Midnight. Thank you for joining us here, man. Appreciate you dropping by. Thank you so much for having me, Ramblin' Rob. Oh, no problem. I know you guys are getting ready to play here. I'm do a quick little uh, 10 questions with you, make it easy, kind of painless, like taking shots, really easy and painless. Um, how many people we have in the band that uh, aren't here right now? Um, we, we are traveling with the five-piece version of the band currently. Um, they're all wandering around here, getting into various uh, situations, and all the fun to be had at Terrapin. Um, fun place. We've got, uh, we've got Lil Ray Ray on keyboards and vocals. Um, We've got Andy Mabe on bass guitar, and we've got Miss Siren on percussion and vocals with us. Um, we don't get to take her out as often as we'd like, but we're about to have her this weekend. She institutionalized or something? Well, she should be. She, <laughs> she's just, she's got a lot going on. Um, but uh, we also have a brand new drummer with us. Uh, Turbo Diesel 300 is her hand. Nice, nice. And she is something else. She's been with the band for a little under two weeks. And we played our first gig with her last night, and it's quite exciting. Yeah, I haven't heard her, so I'm kind of anxious to check her out for sure, for sure. I'm anxious to check her out tonight, too. It's, a, it's still a surprise. So. Well, yeah, I was going to say, only being with the band two weeks really hasn't had time to probably stretch her legs too much. Well, hopefully we'll do a lot of that tonight. Excellent. Do some leg stretching. So how long have you guys been together, you know, except the drummer, how long have you guys been playing together in your current form? Well, actually that's a um, that's a tough question because um, being the uh, the band leader, it really, um, over the years, I've had, I put the band together in two, like 2002 in New Orleans and I've used just uh, the best, funnest people around. Um, so really this, um, our bass player that we have right now is fairly new. Um, so there are a lot of people come in and out of the band, and, uh, and I think uh, I, I think it's it's a ever evolve. It seems like it's always evolving. I'd love for it to stabilize, but um, apparently, like uh, I think uh, my ego is a little too big for some people to handle. Well, I'm sure they'll get used to it eventually. It's just kind of a survival of the fittest. It's Darwinism as far as music goes, right? Yeah, I mean, it's like, I'm always surprised by people who are like, oh, I want to, these are my musical goals, and you all of a sudden you're making them. Like, oh, well, Monday is my TV night. You know, uh, oh, I got this thing. My, my work is giving me dental insurance. Yeah, it's like, oh, well, shit, I'll buy you some toothpaste. Yeah. Right, right, exactly. So we, we go through a lot of members. Um, but I always get the best people that are the most positive uh, available. If somebody's kick-ass and they're not having a good time, then I'm wasting their time and they're wasting mine. Gotcha. So how did, uh, did you guys all meet a lot of the guys, local players down in uh, New Orleans? Um, Actually, uh, Lil Ray Ray and I actually evacuated from Katrina together. She was not the keyboard that player. That doesn't sound fun. She, no, she was actually my massage therapist, believe it or not. <laughs> um, and we kept having, we moved to Nashville to find, or I moved there to find these great players. And I was having her transcribe all the songs so I could audition keyboard players. And when I saw how good she was at it, I was like, why don't you just be the keyboard player? And so she was like, you're crazy. But four years later, she's been playing keyboards literally for four years in the band. Um, so she's pretty, I mean, pretty new on her instrument. But, you know, um, there's various, various levels of, you know, experience, I think, allow for insane leaps in growth. And, like, that's what we like to do on stage. Like, the days of trying to have everything just exactly, you know, mapped out and perfect are... It's, it's, I'm, I'm having 
I'm starting to have as much fun with the curveballs and hearing people do things that they've been attempting for months yeah, so pull really off. Fun. It's like, ah, oh, cool. Are you one of those guys that uh, puts together a set list and then plays and then looks at the set list and is like, well, that one just went out the window? All, all the time. All the Man time. hates me for it. Um, <laughs> Fortunately, this crop of people I have for right now, um, we, we've only been playing with the drummer for, like I said, less than two weeks, so we tried to pull um, a variety of, of cool stuff that would be new and fun for me, as well as um, for people who've been seeing us for a long time. Um, so we our set list of like 60, 70 tunes is now down to like a core 18, you know. Soon to be expanded, I'm sure. Absolutely, yeah, I'm, I'm already teaching them new stuff in the back. Gotcha. No, I heard a couple songs, uh, you know, on YouTube, checked you guys out, check some of your live stuff out. You guys seem to have a uh, an eclectic mix as far as hard to hang you down and put, you know, one moniker on you as far as your sound goes. Uh, but, you know, a little bit of, uh, you know, Jazz, a little blues, a little just straight rock, a little jammy, a little bit of heroes throwing in, great. just kind of a hodgepodge of stuff. What do you think some of your musical influences you bring to the table are as far as lyrically and musically? Well, um, we've actually like kind of narrowed it down into a, a, a form of music we call waterbed rock and roll. <laughs> so it has the, it's got the seventies connotations of. Uh, the you know the the era of the waterbed, but also like what a waterbed is used for and the topical you know and the the ups and downs you have with that. Yeah. Right. And waterbed is a lot of fun. It's a lot of work too. I don't know if you ever had one. You had a but really baffle this waterbed or something. Yeah. Yeah, and you got to get the repair kit and mm -hmm. God forbid that someone's cat comes in and you know um, <laughs> jumps on it. Right. I mean a lot of problems, but. Musically um, influencing uh, me, I grew up, uh, I was born in 1972, so um, KISS was a huge uh, First doorway. concert ever, KISS and Ted Nugent. There you go. I mean, that, that like, I was like, wow, that's something that can, can be done. Neat. That was back when Gene Simmons was blood and fire. Oh, yeah. And, you know, like yeah, that, that was their heyday when, like, right. um, the, like late 70s. Destroyer, um, Love Gun. Just, yeah, insane thing for someone to see, you know. And um, I would say, like, Kiss was a huge influence, but um, uh, as I got older and listening to a lot of, like, you know, metal in, in the 80s and stuff that, like, 11 to 12 year olds listen to, um, I kind of started getting bored with a lot of that, and uh, eventually my um, my musical uh, I don't know, uh, curiosity led me to the Grateful Dead, and they're the reason uh, a lot of us are here right now. I think doing oh yeah what we do in some form or fashion. And, um, it's very uh, it's very easy to say I love what Ace Frehley does with his bends and his chords and his posturing and the whole thing and the performance aspect and easily as much love um, the way uh, Bob Weir will color uh, a, a jam and steer the ship into um, some place that a known territory has never gone before yeah right. I, I'm, I'm way into both of those things but I'm also really into R&B. Uh, like living in New Orleans got me into the whole like kind of um, a lot of brass bands down there and like right. kind of the the, fault, the the behind the beat funky sloppiness of that. And when you have meters, enough radiators. space, yeah, meters, radiators, George Porter Jr., Alan Tucson, Dumpster Funk, Neville, Dumpster Funk, easily to me one of the best live bands on the planet. Um, they. There's enough space in that song, in, in their songs, and they're all just like, they're just, they're nice guys and they're killer musicians, but they're, they're not, they're not show-offs, but right, they right. blow your head off every time. They kind of, like, when I interviewed up at the Dark Star Jubilee, the New Orleans Suspect, you know, those guys, but uh, New Orleans Suspects interviewed them, and the, you know, Willie Dixon's their drummer, and that's what they're kind of like, is like, you know, like Willie Dixon, the Neville brother, who Neville Brothers drummer. He's kind of like. Oh, you mean yeah. Willie Green? Willie Green, sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Willie Green's the bass player. Yeah, he was, uh, he was, said, you know, that's pretty much the New Orleans sound. You know, he was, he threw it all. Me and Willie Green. Yeah. yeah, it's, it's something, it's interesting. We try and, um, it's, it's not something that a lot of people, they're very, the nuances of New Orleans drumming is insane. And, uh, 
any drummer who's tried to play it without like I don't know. It's practice. It's, practice. it's nuts. It's a like, I don't know. I'm not a drummer. I can't play that stuff, but <laughs> I can sure as hell dance to it. Right. You know? Exactly. Exactly. So say you know, knowing that you're at the Jubilee, you got a lot of the uh, Terrapin here. You're at at a venue. Have you played Terrapin before? Or is this your first time down here? This is my first time over here, and I love it. We were welcomed with a beautiful welcoming committee. Excellent. Um, Excellent. Who were, um, I think, trying to thwart our escape so that we had to stay all night, which I would personally like to do. Um, due to other obligations, we have to leave after our set this evening. But I walked in and immediately saw friends, um, which was really neat. Uh, excellent, excellent. I saw um, uh, my friend JP uh, that was playing with Born Cross Eyed. He, he was right. in a band called Cornmeal for a while. And, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. We played with them a couple times, and, uh, and JP's, uh, it was great to see someone like that in a spot like this doing his thing. And, surprise, yeah. surprise. Yeah, it's beautiful. Excellent. So how would you uh, describe your sound if no one on the street has heard you guys before, and, you know, just in a sentence or two, like, you know, this is what we are when we play? Well, we, well, we've been just using that phrase, uh, waterbed rock and roll, for a long time, and some people get it, and other people are like, what the hell is that? Have you guys, I, I talk to a lot of guys who transition that they start out one way and kind of roll into another thing. Are you guys going to stick with this for a while, you think? That oh, I've been, I've been playing these a lot of these songs since 1991. Right? Really? Uh, yeah, like Jug of Wine. Uh, that's yeah, that's one of them I checked out. Which is um, Tid. Which is Tid I wrote in like 1996. Right. You know, it seems just, hey, you know, I don't, I don't want to toot my own horn, but it seems like um, a, a lot of these songs have been kind of, I've been playing them for decades in some cases, um, right, yeah. and it's finally just getting to a point to where they're ready. I don't know if it's my musicianship or the scene or just whatever it is that they're finally starting to get, you know, um, out there into the world and into people's ears. So right. um, I played the. Uh, see, I think it was Instant Buzz, maybe perhaps. Yeah, that's that's a new, I new a live version. Uh, I think of that. Uh, 2012 on the shit of Thursday. That was a good tune. Okay. Yeah, that's a that's a, a fun song, and that's I mean that's what I my whole thing with like songs and style is um I, and I got this from from Paul Stanley. Uh, he had said something. Uh, I we wanted to create the band we wanted to see, and I said that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna create the band that I want to see in here. I want something that's fun to look at. It, easy to dance to, mm -hmm. and has you know improvisational aspects when it's called for. You know, yeah, I was gonna say I watched a couple videos on YouTube actually, and uh, you know some of your guys' outfits and costumes, and uh, you know were pretty impressive. Looks like a looks like a fun time to say the least. Well, I learned a long time ago that uh, you know not everybody goes to shows for the same reason. As a musician, I like to go to shows and. I check out badass musicians. But right. so as a fan, I like to go and dance and get down and party and, and all that. And you know, if somebody's not necessarily into the into the band, we like to give them something to trip out on. You know, and at, actually, like a lot of kids and stuff will um will kind of in the same way that I got into kids. You know, they'll right. see us and be like, "Wow, that's neat. That's weird. Hi, that's crazy as hell." And then then they buy our glow in the dark T-shirt. <laughs> There you go, there you go. So, you guys have been playing live for you know, a long time, since the 90s. What do you like best about playing live? Um, the audience, uh, the audiences that get it are, that is the band. I mean, it's, yeah, I know it's kind of trite and people say it all the time, but right. the band and the audience, there's not a separation. Uh, there, shouldn't, there shouldn't be a big visible one. Um, I like to get off on people getting off on people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I like the energy from a good, from a good crowd. That's a good way of looking at it. Yeah, I mean, I, I like that. I, you know, I, I like to say that I like the uncertainty of it, but I'm, I'm far too, uh, um, you know, crazy about certain parts and kind of anal about, you know, things being made that sound. Yeah, the the uncertainty is not a part of that I'm crazy about, but I like, I do like the. I like the adventure and I like the audience. I mean, the audience is where it's at. It's, 
Yeah, a lot of musicians kind of describe that, that, that lost time, that feeling of you know, not even playing almost, where they're just like lost in a zone. And yeah. It's kind of a weird thing. I, I've never played music. I only really know how to it. It happens. It, but... it happens. It doesn't happen as much as I would like it to. That's um, why you keep playing. But it definitely happened last night, and I, it was it reminds you this is the real reason I'm doing it. This is not so I can you know, wear cover, crazy outfits. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Rolling Stone. I'm just kidding. Good I'm guy. Just kidding. Yeah. Still a little doctor. <laughs> and Dr. Hook there. So you guys uh, have uh, how many albums out right now? We have two out on iTunes right now. Um, we're having one reprinted, and it was supposed to be here, but our mailman is. Totally. Yeah, he like he was going around the corner. He was like doing crossword puzzles and his <laughs> eating sandwiches. I mean, I don't know they gotta eat, but it's like where are my CDs? I'm trying to make a living here. Right, right. So, so you got two albums out. Is there any place online people can go and check you? They're guys all on out? iTunes. Um, on iTunes. Yeah, and they're on Amazon. Any of your uh, downloadable retailers, um, you will be able to buy them off of CaptainMidnightBand.com. Um, your own website, of course. Yeah. 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 Um, but. You know, I mean, we just hope they get around. Our, our real thing is uh, we encourage people to go to live shows because everybody tells us that, you know, our live shows are way more fun than the records. And, right. Uh, well, being a big being a big fan of the Great Dead, of course, I got 800 shows at home. Um, and seeing a lot of bands live. You know, most of the music I play on my show is live Great Dead and live bands. Like, you know, I play the live version of your song. I don't really, you know, I very rarely play album cuts per se because I feel most people are at their best live. It's, you know, that's true. And then a lot of times you have an off night and you're like cringing because you see like there are a few microphones up and you're like, God, there's a, this is about to be a somewhat widely distributed recording of us playing like shit. Yeah. Well, and, and honestly, today everybody has a cell phone. You never know what's going to get uploaded, man. That's right. That's why you got to be good. Yeah, right. Yeah, I the, talked to Carl. The, the shitty bands were, are going to weed themselves out. Yeah, I talked to Carl Denson and uh, yeah, we got played something from Halloween last year. He was all dressed up doing Heart of Glass by Blondie, I think. He didn't even know that was out there. It was on YouTube. Yeah, Carl's, uh, he's amazing. His drummer is one of my favorite drummers, John State. Uh, that guy is, he, yeah. So, you're going to be down here, of course, Terrapin. Is there any place uh, later on this summer that people can check you guys out live? You're playing any big festivals, have any big, you know, events you're looking forward to? You know, honestly, um, we're we're a baby band, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm really uh, pleased and excited about the the recent bump in attention we've been getting. So we've just been out, um, you know, hitting the road as much as possible. So um, nothing really major. Uh, we played with Mo last night at Pisco. That was quite. That's pretty major. That, it, yeah, that was major. Right. Um, in the past. Um, and then tonight is really a big deal for us. So um, we're glad to be here. But, you know, we've got a lot of dates booked and we're just going to be. Um, continuing to do that and we list them every time people sign just go up. go to your website, right? Yeah, and we, we like to, you know, um, just always, you know, stay open to ad stuff. Um, we, uh, one of the things I am looking forward to, which, you know, sadly coincides with this uh, Harvest Festival is right. Interlocking, Four Nights of Further, Neil Young. Right, like, that was an insane yeah. lineup. I've already got my tickets for that. So we're actually taking that weekend off. It's usually a big weekend for us <laughs> to play. And, we're like, not. Nah, well, you can bring your guitars and walk around the park and not play, maybe something like that, you know? Yeah, if my mind's not split open. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, we're going to wrap this up here. We'll just two more little questions here. What do you think, after you know, playing music almost your whole life, what do you think your best musical memory is? Well, I, I have a couple really talking about the sailing moments um, when you're in the zone. Um, my old band out of New Orleans was playing at the Boom Boom Room in San Francisco. Um, Merle Saunders, uh, the late, great, beautiful Merle, uh, came on stage and jammed with us. And we jammed. We didn't run down the chord changes. We took it out there. And I'd seen Merle many times uh, prior to then. And like two years early, I like, got a picture with him in his autograph. And here he is sitting with us. And, um, and not only sitting in with us, but the, the star struckness um, completely dissipated and we started making 
like, all right, what's up here? We, we made you know, music. Like, you know. <laughs> I would love to get a copy of it somewhere, but, you know, that was 1990. Or, no, 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 the 2000. 2000? So there wasn't a lot of uh, devices like we have now. But um, it's, it's up here, and that feeling, um, like I said, I got that feeling last night, that same thing where it's like, you're not there and I'm not here. It's just like we're all... Somewhere. In the yeah. zone, right? Yeah. Yep, the zone. In the twilight zone. All right, man, we're going to one last not, question not to wrap it up here because uh, I know you're getting ready to go on. What do you think your favorite Grateful <laughs> Dead song is? Oh, God. Jeez. Um, um, you know, it's such a that's, a... that's a tough question, right, oh, Rob? But I really... Um, I, if, if, if pushed against the wall, I'm push it. I'll push you. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to do the uh, the whole Terrapin Station. Sweet. Oh yeah, there you go. That's that's good. the that's the one that made me go out and buy all the Grateful Dead shit I have now. Right, right. Yep. Exactly. I just heard it at the right time. Exactly. Yeah, it's a good tune. I like it. And of course, there's Dark Star, Jack Straw, and uh, I like Easy to Love You a lot. Oh, Easy to Love You. That's the first time that, that one's came up in all my interviews. I love Brent. Yeah. I like the soulful R&B stuff. That's my kind of shit. Yeah, I was going to say he's a good guy. Uh, any shout-outs you want to give here as we're exiting uh, to the uh, stage left? Yeah, I'd like to shout-out to uh, my mom and dad, who I'm sure are not listening to an online chicken band of uh, Grateful Dead Live Station, but I will oh, make this so, yeah. Um my mom and dad and uh, my puggle Klaus who is a uh, huge uh, Grateful Dead fan so there you go um, Klaus I'll be home soon there you go don't get the garbage alright man well Captain Midnight I do appreciate you dropping by here visiting Ramblin' Rob down up here our little bit of hit me heaven down here I hope you enjoy the rest of your time here and thank you very much my man thank you very much tear Rob. it up tonight tear yep. it up good afternoon alright